Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Wise Guys from Gale Force 9 Games. This is a game for three to four players that plays in at least 90 minutes. Wise Guys is a competitive worker placement style game. Uh, I believe this is actually the first non-IP game from Gale Force 9. Uh, but if you've ever played either Sons of Anarchy or Vault of the Dragons, this game is going to look pretty familiar to you, although it's not exactly the same. They have made some adjustments and, I think, improvements. So, here's sort of the basic game setup. There's going to be a varied number of locations out. At the beginning of the game, there will all be, always be these starting locations and then a few additional locations. Each gang is going to have a little screen to hide their information behind and then their actual gang board there. Um, so setup itself looks pretty easy. These are event cards, these Roaring Twenties cards, and this is one of the differences between Sons of Anarchy and, and Vault of the Dragons, is that they have these cards that can change uh, part of the game. And we'll look at this one here. So, drive to location orders, move a rival gang's member, drive orders cannot be used to move your own members. So that's kind of interesting. That's one of the actions you can take on your turn is to basically move your people around to different locations. Well, if this card is up, uh, you don't move your own figures, you move somebody else's. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, the black market is where you will sell um, alcohol at the end of each round. The boss of boss tokens is kind of like the starting player token. The, the person who has it always goes first. Uh, but it also allows you to break any ties in the game, which is sounds pretty important. See, every gang will have certain made men, and then they also have associates. Associates can be turned into made men, who have obviously better stats. There are two stats in this game. There's a fighting stat called slugging, and then there's a talking stat. That's a, a difference from Sons of Anarchy as well. I think in that one, all you could do is fight. So, depending on the location, you will gain it by other means. Basic little round summary here. Order tokens. Uh, flip over new locations if there is any available. Reveal uh, Roaring's 20 cards. Then each player will issue orders. Then at the end of the round, you'll all sell to the black market. Uh, last calls are basically resolving those Roaring 20 cards if there are any. And then finally clean up and in, then into the next round. I believe it's six, yes. Six rounds for a full game. So some optional rules here. Everything looks really well laid out. Um, was easy to follow. Glossary in the back here is nice. A nice little cheat sheet again about the different aspects of the game and how to resolve them. It's nice to see. So I don't know if it had an index. No index at the beginning. So all right. So punch board here. We got a few different sheets. It's like four. So. There's basically three resources in the game. There's money, which is how you win. Uh, regardless of anything else, the person with the most money wins at the end of the game. There's alcohol, which you sell for money at the end of each round. And then there are guns. So guns obviously help you in fights. They give you more strength, uh, but they actually reduce your clout because you're drawing attention. And uh, the police don't like people with not a lot of clout. We've got our boss of boss tokens here. Some cars here. Uh, looks like, oh, these are the order tokens. So these are the tokens you use to do different things throughout the round, and obviously you'll be spending them. I think each gang has a certain number of them. And here are tokens for made men, and then smaller tokens for their associates. Everything punches out really well. No complaint there. You kind of expect this with Gale Force 9. I mean, they know what they're doing. So let's see here. Our four different gangs. We've got the Sheldon Gang, the Saltis McEl Erlane Gang, woo, uh, Northside Gang, and the Chicago Outfit, and then each side, yeah, it's going to be the same stuff. Just those same reminders that were on the back of the rule book. But again, I really like these sort of a uh, cheat sheets that they give out. Uh, I don't like going back into rule books for explanations. And then each gang is going to have their own player board. I think most of this is going to be. Pretty much the same, but they do have uh, special abilities as well. So the number of order tokens you get each turn. Let's see, so it is different per player. Two plus one. Okay, 
Uh, your gang order is a special thing that you can do. So this gang, the Chicago Outfit, can turn money into clout, can steal alcohol from a rival gang, turn money into guns, and just gain money. Uh, then they have a gang rule. Um, okay, so these are unique as well. So it looks like everything here is unique, which is nice to see. Starting assets are also unique. Uh, black market appears to be the same for each of them. So this is your level of clout. The more clout you have, the more alcohol you can sell in the black market. If you have four clout, you can sell as much as you want. If you go down to zero clout, one of your made men has to basically go to jail uh, to increase your clout back up to one. And if you only have one made man left, this is actually player elimination. If you get to zero clout with only one made man. Let's see, this is just a little starting board to put the Roaring Twenty cards on, but nice artwork there. So. We've got a die for each player. This, I believe, is only used for two different things. One is starting player. So at the very beginning of the game, you'll roll to see who is a starting player, which would be six. Um, and then whoever, uh, they will get to pick their gang first. And then whoever's last will be, be the, uh, the boss of bosses at the very beginning of the game. So they'll start the game, as well as breaking ties. Uh, the other way they're used is um, combat. And I forgot there's one more, and that is when your guys are hurt. You roll to see if they recover or not. Um, and then in combat, I believe you just roll an add to your strength. Um, but it does give you a variable amount of strength. So combat is not deterministic. It's not just how much you have versus how much I have. There is a, a dice or random uh, aspect to it. So these look like they're all Roaring Twenty cards. That is a lot. So you play six rounds. The first round you only have one, second round you have two, uh, but in every other round you have three. So, so that would be four, five, six. So in a single game, you're not even gonna see half of these. So that's nice. There's a lot of variability there. Let's take a look at a couple of them. So you lose two clout, but gain nine money. Uh, skip the black market step. So again, nobody can sell alcohol this round. When that comes out, steal two from a rival gang. I assume that these occur when you activate them at the bottom, right? So if you do a fight in a place that uses slugging, you would be able to activate this or would have to activate this. Uh, gangs may not trade alcohol, injure a rival gang member of your choice when you do a slugging action. Uh, when you do a talking action, trade a money for two clout. So again, a lot of variability there. And there could be up to three of these out during a round. So a lot of different interactions can be added to the game. And then I believe these are the location tiles. And that'll probably be the final, yeah, final thing in the box. So location tiles. One is what it allows you to do. So this one lets you trade guns for money. I'm sorry, allows you to trade money for guns. That's how an arrow works. Um, and then it also tells you what type of attack you do here. So basic structure of the game is you're going to be using your order tokens to take different actions during your turn. It's an action selection worker placement game. You're going to be putting associates or made men onto locations. Uh, that's one of the actions you can take is to move your guys around. Another action you can take is to activate a tile, but you can only activate a tile if you're the only person there. If there are other people there, you can use an action token to start a fight. The fight determine is uh, dependent on what it says here at the bottom. So this is a slugging fight. And then we have some locations that you talk it out. Um, you'll add up stats, potentially add guns, and then whoever has the most, the other player um, will be kicked off the location. If guns were involved, they'll actually be injured. Um, and then after they're gone, obviously, now you can exploit the location to trade money for guns. Some locations are starting locations. Those will always be out. The rest of them are just randomly chosen. And I believe there's six in a standard game. So six random ones, which it looks like you've got almost 20 here to choose from. So again, in a single game, the locations that come out could be pretty important because you're not gonna see all of them in a single game. Uh, and then of course, just a little reminder for the black market, how it works, depending on if there are three players or four players. When you go to sell at the black market at the end of each round, 
each player is going to uh, select the amount of booze they want to sell secretly and then all players are going to reveal how much they're selling based on how much is sold determines how much you get right so if everybody's selling a lot of alcohol everybody's only going to get one dollar but if you're the only person selling alcohol that round and you're selling three you're gonna get nine dollars just for those three so a little bit of uh, trickery in there maybe some bluffing involved as well uh, and that's everything you get in a copy of wise guys from gale force nine games